Hey, and welcome back to your number one source for cozy gaming and design content. Today, I'm going to be playing some more of your suggested games. So, without any further ado, let's get into number one. This is a game from the developer My Next Games. They're a small indie dev who make short, free games, and this one in particular is available on Steam right now. I want to start out by saying I love the drive behind devs like this. I love and always want to support a developer who has cool ideas and executes on those ideas as they see fit. And while the gameplay wasn't necessarily for me, and I'll get to that in a second, I do think games like this, even outside of their intended audience, have a great creative value to the gaming community as a whole. That being said, I didn't find the point-and-click nature particularly engaging. And while I think it's a cool concept to have the player take the role of the ship AI fixing things around the ship uh, while trying to solve the murder, I also think that the puzzles you're solving are far too simple and the only difficult part is in the last jump where they just kind of throw a bunch at you to try to overwhelm you. I think this concept could be improved with more jump cycles to solve the murder and also actual detective work being required to solve the murder. As is, you just have to wait until the murderer says that they're the murderer, and I don't particularly find flicking back and forth between rooms, hoping to catch the dialogue at the right moment, particularly engaging to me. I think this game would really benefit from giving each round more time to breathe, and making the actual detectiving more engaging through something like the ship faults being related to how the captain was murdered, and really fleshing out the mechanics behind fixing those faults. Also, I think the dialogue, while related to the plot, and pretty well written, is basically all filler until someone says that they murdered the captain to themselves while they're alone. And the time-dependent nature leads someone like me, who struggles with reading quickly in general, to just skim really quick over what's being said and try to catch someone admitting faults to themselves in a room alone. This leads to everything everyone else says just feeling irrelevant. I think giving it more time to play out and letting each conversation subtly hint at who murdered the captain and why could be a big improvement. As well as adding some more characterization to the actual characters, because while their art and design is incredibly interesting and evocative, and we'll get to that in a, in a bit. There's not really much in the way of characterization of each of the characters, and there's really not much of a way to do that with five rounds to build that characterization. So that's part of why I think fleshing it out would really help. I think it would really help to be able to build a connection to the characters and care that they murdered the captain, care about why they might have murdered the captain, stuff like that. So adding a little bit more characterization I think could have really helped it. It's not my kind of game, and that doesn't make it bad. And given that it's totally free, I can't complain. The music and art alone is incredibly impressive. However, I do think the roguelite format does those two strengths and injustice. At least how it's done currently. Ultimately, I liked it as a short experience, and again, as this dev seems more interested in making conceptually interesting games and making them available for free, I won't complain about its faults. They aren't asking for any of your money, and a huge part of the creative process lies in making what you can now and learning how to make the next thing better. We don't need to shoot for perfection, and as part of the learning process, I think this game probably fulfilled its purpose and I definitely didn't have a bad time with it. The mechanics are bug-free, the whole experience is well-polished, and the actual haptics of playing the game are perfectly functional. And I like that the murder can be done by different crew members as well. I think mixing roguelike elements with a murder mystery is a super cool idea, if given the time and budget to be fully fleshed out. Though I think with a pool of just three characters to change up the scenarios, it's bound to get stagnant after a run or two. However, like I said, as a vertical slice or a free demo, this is great. It definitely gets the idea across in an extremely polished and clearly thought out way. 
And again, it's free, so these shortcomings aren't a reason not to give it a try, but instead just points for improvement if the dev wants to go further with this title. Though it should also be noted, I have no experience with the game development process, and I'm absolutely positive that what I'm asking for would not only drive up the price, but also make this game take a lot longer to make. And I don't know what this dev's situation is like. I don't know if this is a fully self-funded game, or if they're just working on this for fun in their off time. And if those are the case, then this is a great showing, and I would love to see more from this dev, because what they do have here is beautiful art and very polished gameplay. I think what they need is more time, which is always in short supply. So I say go give this game a try. It's free, and I don't think you'll have a bad time. And hey, you might even have a great time. So I say go check it out. This is, I think, a great example of a beautiful story of personal growth with cute animal characters that doesn't overstay its welcome, and knows that not all stories need to be long, drawn out, 100 plus hour experiences. This is a great example of how to do a short game well. The game opens similarly to uh, Stardew Valley, actually, uh, with your character in a car with their mom on the way to camp in the mountains. There's some cute dialogue, which really helps to characterize the protagonist and set the scene in a very efficient way. After arriving at camp, you find yourself outside of a cabin and proceed to explore the island and find and interact with tons of cute little animals, doing short quests for them and collecting rewards as you go. I really love it when games tie character ability upgrades to really personal and humanizing side quests and physical rewards for those side quests. I think things like collecting feathers, which let you fly higher, or finding a lucky sweatband, which lets you run, really help ground the ability upgrades. It's a small thing, but I think there's a lot of value to your character not just increasing a stat number and being able to do something new, but instead having to work and find the ability improvements within the world. And doubly so when you have to interact with NPCs and learn about them and their personalities and motivations in order to progress. Now, as with everything, this can be done poorly, like when NPC dialogue is boring and overly long, or when characters don't really have personalities and really do just feel like glorified signposts. But this game avoids that expertly. All the characters feel unique, and while every interaction is rather short, I actually enjoyed bumping into these characters and looked forward to seeing them the next time that I ran into them along the trail. Not only did it make it feel like these characters were doing their own thing while I was off doing mine, but it just helped build that sense of a living, breathing world. And that is to say nothing of the touching life lessons learned by our player character over the course of their short hike. I think I'm at a point in my life where these kinds of stories don't just feel overly emotional and sappy, but instead actually feel profound and important, regardless of how simple and basic the lessons learned might have been. I always love it when a game is able to make me cry at the end, and while this isn't quite on the level of one of my all-time favorite games, Little Gator Game, it's damn close. Speaking of my favorite games... F amazing. It's the only way that I really know how to describe this to you. I love this game so much. It's a beautiful trek through a desolate maritime wasteland. If you're looking for foggy, gothic New England, 1800s-esque sailor vibes, this is it. I'm not entirely sure what the story is, but it seems to be very much vibes-based. But don't get me wrong, what they lack in deep philosophical story, they make up for in mechanics. Everything you do has immaculate feedback with incredibly chunky sound effects behind it. The sound design in this game has got to be one of my favorites in any game. Every interaction you have with your ship has a sound associated with it. The sound of the engine rumbling away as you maintain speed and fuel levels, the clanking of mechanics as you raise or lower the sail, everything about the sound is just incredible. And don't even get me started on the music. You start out with mostly ambient sounds and some non-diegetic music to set the mood, but shortly into your trip, you find an old radio tower, and inside you pick up a radio so you can listen to beautifully old-timey music. 
it's very clear to me that these devs had a vibe in mind and kept it firmly locked in their sights as they were making this game. It really does feel like you've been transported to a whole nother world in a way not many other games can accomplish. And they do all that without losing sight of what makes this game fun to play as well. The actual mechanics are, sure, at their core, simple. But so are the mechanics of Mario. But that hasn't stopped it from being one of the most enduring games to have ever been made. You make your way through the game by staying on top of all the systems in your ship and making sure you always have enough fuel and fixing any mechanisms that go out of whack. All by interacting with a series of red buttons and switches. Everything feels extremely fluid and second nature to interact with, and just navigating your ship is a beautiful mix of platforming and systems management. The masterful use of a limited color palette not only makes for an absolutely gorgeous experience, but also really helps the player understand what you can interact with. For the most part, everything is separated into effectively three planes, the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. This allows for a great parallax effect, as the entire game is played scrolling left to right, but it also helps focus the player's attention. You don't have to think about interacting with the background or foreground elements, or missing an important object because it was placed on one of the other planes. You can just move forward and tune your focus into the middle ground. This lends itself to the kind of chilled out experience that I think the game was going for. Though it shouldn't be understated just how tense it can get. Not in a Resident Evil or Silent Hill type of way, but in a much more existential way. There's this one point where you're forced to let your ship roll down a hill, far out of view, while a hurricane barrels down on you as you try to make your way back. It's an extremely harrowing event, which really highlights just how much your character relies on this massive metal ship they're making their way through the game with. And that brings me to an interesting way this game plays with scale. See, there's this thing in art called hierarchical scale, which basically just means if something's bigger in a piece, it's probably because it's more important. And this game plays with that in a really interesting way. The player character is, in most cases, the smallest thing on the screen. And while obviously the player character is the most important thing, because without them, the game doesn't move forward, but in a more conceptual sense, making the player character so small helps show that, to them, their ship is the most important thing in this world. It keeps them safe from the elements and from the big, dangerous world outside the ship. And it makes us, the players, feel unsafe and uneasy and vulnerable when we're outside the ship. Which I think is probably how the devs intended for the player character to feel. All in all, this is just an absolute masterpiece of the game. I can't wait to jump back in and finish it after I'm done making this video, because it really is absolutely incredible what these devs were able to make here. If you haven't tried it, I implore you to go buy it and play it now. It's unlike anything I've ever played before. But that's three more games you guys suggested I play. And once again, we've got some absolute bangers. So thank you guys so much for all your many recommendations. I'm making a list, which at this point is getting quite long, but please do keep leaving your favorite games in the comments, and hopefully one day I'll be able to get to every single one of them. But for now, that's it for this video. I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and happy gaming.